Hey, good morning, church family, and good morning, Facebook friends. We're glad to have you here today. Again, like everything else going on in our world, we're still in uh, precarious situations where you know people are having to stay home. Uh, we we don't want to we want to keep social distancing going on, so we're still doing church from our living room. So that's okay. We're glad to have you with us today. Appreciate you being here. Hey, today as we've done started last week, we're gonna play some Bible trivia, okay? We're going to play some Bible trivia. Well, we are so glad you're here with us. So whether you know anything about the Bible or not, I'll tell you this, two questions today, you have at least a 50% chance of getting it right. So regardless of whether you know something about the Bible or not, or whether you're a Bible scholar, you should be able to do this. So here's our first trivia question. Are you ready? Be thinking. Here's your first trivia question is when... David, that's who we've been talking about, right? David, before David was from the tribe of Benjamin. Is that true or false? True or false? David was from the tribe of Benjamin. So just answer that in the comments below. If you're if this is your first time to do that, just put it in the comment and hit enter. You'll see it there. Just hit enter, just like you were making a post on Facebook. And true or false? All right? Is it true or false? David was from the tribe of Benjamin. Do 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 do. Do, 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 do. That's the best version I can do. I can barely play the radio. So the answer is false. David was not from the tribe of Benjamin. That's the tribe Saul was from. That was the other character that we talked about last week. He was from the tribe of Judah. He was from the tribe of Judah. Okay, so hopefully you got that right. If not, you'll get another chance if you don't know anything about the Bible on a 50-50 deal, true or false at the last question. So the second question, the se second Bible trivia question is, before David was king, he was a what? What was David before he was king? Okay. Do, 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 do. All right. What was he? What was he? A shepherd. That's right. He was a shepherd. That's who David was before he was a king. He, he kept the flock of his dad, Jesse, as a shepherd. So he was a shepherd before he became king. Now, you may have never thought that a shepherd could become king. But again, remember, remember, there's this big plan that God has. And sometimes God doesn't follow the way we would look at things. We might not consider a shepherd qualified to be king. But sure enough, as we'll learn today, David had some great qualities that made him the perfect candidate. To be king. All right. Bible trivia question number three. Right. Are you ready? 50 50. Even if you don't know anything about the Bible at all, you're more likely going to get this right. So, Bible, the, the trivia question is when David became king, he made Bethlehem his capital city. Is that true or is that false? True or false? Do, 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 True or false? Right. It's false. It's false. Why? Because Jerusalem became the capital of Israel as it is even this day. So so uh, hopefully that was a little fun for you. Hopefully you kind of like, oh, OK, this is this is this is kind of cool uh, to, to, to be a part. Because today we're going to we're going we're gonna to continue our journey with God as he God moves us out. God has always been moving people out of where they are to a place that he needs them to be and wants them to be. And so today we're talking about, uh, we're still talking about David. We're going to be in the book of first Samuel. Okay. We're going to be in the book of first Samuel, the last chapter of first Samuel chapter 30. So if you want to find that, uh, and we're going to, we're going to continue to talk about David and, and where he finds himself. Because when God moves us out, he gives us the opportunity. He gives us the opportunity to what? What do you suppose? He gives us the opportunity in life and everything we do to, to step up and, and, and lead other people by, by serving them, by, by, by realizing that, that in our lives, we can put other people first. Now, that's not normal for people to put other people first. But as we think about that, I, I, in the time in which we live, there's a lot of of things going on. You know, we live in a world that's under in turmoil. There's unfairness. There's injustice. There's division. Uh, people, people are caught up in things that, 
that we would have never thought they would have been in before. And as long as it's out there, we're kind of fine. But when it finds us, it's a, it's a different story, right? We find ourselves alone. We find ourselves doubting. We find ourselves afraid. We find ourselves overwhelmed in all of that. And, and it's, that's only natural for, for us. And as time goes along, we, we, we'll, we have all or will encounter people who've been ill with the virus. We're going to encounter them in our life. It, we're going to encounter people that may be a coworker, It may be somebody in our family or extended family. Maybe a neighbor. Maybe somebody from church. We're going to encounter people who've had the virus. Okay, that, That's going to happen. It may make us a little nervous to, to know that. But, but realize that, that that's a part of the world we live in. This is not the first time for us to encounter the illnesses that we didn't know much about. There was a time when we didn't know much about influenza. And we've we, we, now it's just a common thing. Oh, you've had the flu. Okay. There was a time when we didn't know about colds. Okay. That is, I have a cold. We, we just assumed that, hey, you know, I don't know what's wrong with me kind of thing. Right. That, that's a thing of the past. We, we don't worry about that anymore. There was a time when we didn't know what tuberculosis was. Okay. Th th there's times that we have met these things and moved through them. Okay. So we're going to get through this. We're going to meet people who've been ill. We're going to meet people who have encountered the virus in a bad way. Maybe somebody's died in their family. Maybe, maybe our neighbor, maybe a coworker, maybe somebody at church, maybe, maybe just a random person that we hear about who's going to have faced this pandemic, this virus, this struggle that we're in in our world. We're, we're going to meet people who are now unemployed. And they're they're struggling because they don't have any income. We're gonna meet we're gonna meet people who have who have uh, who business owners who face financial ruin because they lost everything they had because they they were they were out here trying to make make their way in the world. We're gonna meet those people. We're gonna we're gonna meet people whose whose relationships have been broken in this process. That is people who who this whole this whole pandemic approach of fear and separation, uh, social distancing and mask wearing and, and, and tattling on each other and all that kind of thing is, is going to drive people apart. It's going to break up families. We're going to meet those people. We're going to find them a, a, along this journey of life. And, and then we're going we're gonna to find people who, in all kind of precarious situations, we're going to find them. What can we do for them? What, what's something we can do for them? Well, today I want to invite you as we start to service today, as we start the message, is I want, you, I want us to pray for them. Maybe you've never prayed before. That's okay. I, I, I think you can utter these words. And if you, if you are a Christ follower, then, then you probably already know what you should be praying. But I'm going to pray for us as we start today anyway. And, and you may not be comfortable doing this, but I am. And I'm just going to ask you to stand, extend your hand out. Because you, you, you probably can't touch the person that maybe need, you need to pray for. Maybe they're a neighbor, a friend, a coworker, somebody at church, maybe a neighbor down the street, maybe, maybe somebody in another city. I see it every day on, on Facebook here. People saying, hey, I need you to pray for. I need you to pray for. I need you to pray for. My friend has this. So, so let's just pray for them right now today. Just so extend, extend your hand. God, today, my friend, my neighbor, my coworker, a family member, even a person I don't know is in a desperate place today. They, for some of them, they've, they've heard or tested positive for this virus, and, and they're afraid. They don't know what's going to happen. God, for some, some it's, it's their business has been shut down, a, man, a mandatory lockdown. For others, they've been separated from their loved ones because they can't, they can't go and they can't be in contact. God, today, today, would you use us in the opportunity to be a blessing to them, to serve them? Would you do that today, God? I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for doing that. I, I, I believe it's, it's something that all of us can do because in, as God moves us out, as God moves us through the process of this, it's an opportunity to put others first. Now that's counter that's kind of counterintuitive to a lot of us is to put other people first. It, it's it we tend to want to look out for ourselves because we've been taught 
You know, if you if you don't look out for yourself, nobody else is going to. Well, that's well, that may be true in the human plane, not true in the spiritual plane, because we have a God who loves us. We have a God who cares about us. We have a God who's always watching over us. He knows so much about us. He knows the number of hairs that are on our head. He knows the very intent of our heart. He knows the very words we're fixing to speak or not speak. He knows the very feelings that we have. He knows them. He knows us that well. But he also knows something else about us. He knows the dark side of us. Matter of fact, he, he, he is so willing to be honest with us that he comes to us and says, there, there's none of you good. There's none of you righteous. Every one of you have gone astray. He knows us that well. But, but just because that's happened, he doesn't push us away. He doesn't say, oh, no, look. No, he doesn't. He, no, matter of fact, he climbed up on a cross and died for us. Even though we, even though we crucified him, even even though we were the we were the ones responsible for the sins that his son Jesus bore on a cross for us. So God knows a little bit about the 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 situation that we find ourselves in today of being of being separated. So God wants to wants to give us the opportunity as He leads us out from wherever we are. To put other people first. In First Samuel, in, in First Samuel chapter thirty, the, as the story of David continues in this process, they had arch enemies. The Israelites had arch enemies. One of them was the Philistines. If you remember, we talked about this last week when when David rose up and slew the giant Goliath. And God, because God leads us, when God leads us out, He gives us the opportunity to overcome the giants in our life. David, David was a good example of that. Well, that, that, that continued to escalate. They continued to have to fight their enemies. Not only the Philistines, but they would have to fight another enemy that they had, the Amalekites. And David found out, David found out where the Amalekites were. Now, the Amalekites had had a great war happen, a great battle happen, and they had collected all this stuff. Some of that stuff belonged to David and his family. Some of the people that they had captured were some of David's people. David found out where they were. He gathered up his army and he slipped in and he defeated them. He beat them all. And the, only 400 of them survived and that was only because they had camels. They got on camels and they rode off and the Israelites couldn't catch them. But when that happened, David gathered up all the all their stuff, okay, all their stuff, and and, and all the food, all the clothing, all the gold, all the swords, all the stuff, all the people, he gathered them up. And, and so God gives us the opportunity to put other people first because inside the human spirit, there's this, there's this cry to be free. There's this, there's this movement in us to be free from the clutches of fear. Well, David, David delivered on that for his people. He said, you're no longer under the power of the enemy. There's this, there's this free, want this, this cry to be free from falsehoods. There's this cry to be free from the bondage of slavery. There's a, there's this cry to be free from our past, from our failures. There's this cry to be free from, from the giants that try to rule over us. But there's also a, a cry for us to be free, to give the opportunity to put others first. And that's what we're going to talk about today here in. First Samuel 30. I first want us to understand there's, there, God gives us at least five opportunity, five ways to implement the opportunity of putting other people first. We find them in this passage. So let's look at the first one. But our verse today that we're going to kind of hopefully put in our mind is, is from the book of James. James wrote this, these words, every good gift and every perfect gift, that is every complete gift, every mature gift, every gift that's come to its fruition comes down from God, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Meaning, there's no dark side to God. No, there's no in the, in the shadow part of God. See, he's not like us. See, every one of our lives, there's, a, there's, there's some dark places we don't want to go. There's some dark things we don't want people to know about. There's a, there's a little bit of shadow to us. And hey, let's be honest, most of the time, 
we're wearing a mask. Not not the pandemic mask, that too, but oftentimes we're wearing we're wearing a mask so that other people can't see the real us. God doesn't have that. God's real. God's up straight. There's no there's no variance to God in, in how God comes across. But the gifts that come to us, that come from God to us, they're they're there's a gifts that God wants us to use. And so one of those gifts is is the gift and the opportunity for us as we find here today what David did. When David routed all the people, here's what it says in 1 Samuel 30, uh, verse 18. So David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and nothing of theirs was lacking, either small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything that they had taken from them. David recovered it all. So David gathered all their stuff together. And you might be saying, well, you might be saying, well, what is what does that have to do with it? Well, it, what it has to do with the fact that that God gives us things in life. God blesses us. Now you might be saying, well, I don't have all that I want to have. I, I, hey, I understand that. Most people don't because they make it about themselves. See, David didn't. David didn't just go fight this battle for himself. He also went and fought it for his people, for those around him, for his family for the families of the men that, that stood with him and as soldiers. David went, he even, went, at, he even went, and went and fought this battle for other people who were just off in a distance, who weren't even involved in this. And he gathered all these things up so that David could use that to bless other people, to bless other people. See, when God moves us out, he gives us an opportunity to, con- to see the contribution of others, to see the contribution of others. You see, in this battle that they just had, not every one of David's soldiers were there. Not all the army was present. There were some 400 of his soldiers who had been fighting and fighting every day against the enemy, and they were tired because they were older like me, maybe like you. And they were tired, and they stayed behind to guard the supplies of the army. They stayed behind. So, So when they won... David said, gather all the stuff up. We're going we're gonna to give some to everybody. So let's go back to where the supplies are. And so the army's going that way. And as David, as David goes to meet the guys that are, had stayed behind, he, they come out to meet him. David blesses them. And, he's, and he goes to talk about, we're going to bless you too. Some people who had fought with David said this. Said this. The wicked and worthless people... I'll, t- I'll tell you a little bit about their story in a minute. Then all the wicked and worthless men of those who went with David said, because they didn't go with us, we will not give them any of the spoil that we have recovered, except for that which belongs to their children and their family, so that they can get their stuff and get out of here. See, when, when God calls us out, to, to serve other people by, by recognizing the contribution of others. There is, we have an enemy. Sometimes this enemy is inside of us. Sometimes that enemy is walking about the, the face of the earth, seeking to how he can entrap us into this trap. But oftentimes what happens, the, the, our enemy seeks to convince us that I, that's that letter I, me, is the most important. I'm the most important here. I'm the most valuable. What I do is, is, is the best. I contribute the most. And he plants this idea of selfishness in us. It's a we versus them. Now, right now in, in our country, in America, that's rampant everywhere. It's being promoted we versus them. This color against this color. This color skin against this color skin. This this economic person against this e- economic person. This political view against this political view. You know the was- mask wearers and the non-mask wearers. You know the the people that believe the virus is a hoax and the people believe that the virus is going to kill us all. It's all it, it's a it's a it's a it's us against them, and that gets put into us. By the evil one. 
Because you see, when you when you look out and you see people and you realize that everybody has something to contribute, that we all matter, and that you matter as a person, then you begin to realize, wait a minute, this person has something to contribute. Well, like David and his army, and even though they had fought and stood with David, there were some people in there who were perverse. They were caught up in their own game. They weren't caught up with their own selves. Matter of fact, the scripture even points out not only were they wicked, but they were worthless. They were worthless. Why? Because they couldn't give that, they, they couldn't contribute. They weren't willing to contribute. You see, when you're not willing to contribute to help other people, sorry, you might not want to hear this today, but it makes you pretty much worthless in humanity. Because it's not about you, not about me. It's about, about us together. It's about, it's about the fact that, that we're here to help other people. That winning is about, uh, and, and success in life it is not the mountain I can build. It's not my, about my kingdom. It's about what God wants to do through us to help other people. And we do that when we realize other people have a lot to contribute. And David recognized that. David said, oh no. These men who stayed behind to... to to protect the supplies, they're going to get the same amount all the rest of you are going to get because they had a part too. They were important too. See, oftentimes, all we see is the people who come to light and don't realize that behind every good person is a whole bunch of other people that made that happen. Every famous person, every politician, every, every actor, every, every leader at every company, every leader in a community, Behind them are people you never see that made them and gave them the opportunities that they have. David said, we're going to bless those people too. Because you see, when God gives us opportunity and leads us out, he gives us this opportunity to recognize the contribution of other people. You're not going to get anywhere in life or you're not getting very far if you don't realize that it takes other people to help you get there. David brings that to light for us. Number two. When God moves us out, he gives us a reminder that, that what we have in life, what we have in life comes from God. Think about that. We tend to think that we're self-made. We tend to think, oh, I, I created that money or I made that money or I made that product or I'm the one doing the work and therefore it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. But in reality is, is, is that David reminds us that, that what we have in life is comes from God. Remember that verse in James, every good gift and perfect bit, gift comes down from God, right? Well, here David gives us these, these words in 1 Samuel 30, verse 23. But David said to those wicked and worthless people, my brothers, you shall not do so with what the Lord has given you. David, said, David reminded him, said, we didn't get that on our own. We didn't win that battle by ourselves. God was with us. And it is God not only who has given us this, but who has preserved us and delivered into our hand the enemy. He said, do you think for one moment that this, that this, this ragtag army that we've put together could defeat those people if God had not been with us? He said, do you, do you really think that? See, because oftentimes we, we, we think an awful lot of ourselves. And David reminded, reminded them that, that our enemy wants us to live a life of keeping score. Keeping score. Of, uh, of, of being the kind of person that goes, okay, let's see, let me look here in my little book. Keep a notch on, keep the notches on my belt. Put the X's in the book. Oh, I won, I won, I won, I won. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't. And then also the fact that the enemy wants us to, to live a life of thinking I'm entitled. I'm entitled. I should have that. That should be mine. I worked hard for it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's what the enemy wants us to think, not to realize that that this contribution that we're supposed to make and this ability for, for, for us to have what we have today is a gift from God. It's a gift from God. Something that's on loan to us. Because, hey, 
we all know, we've all been to funerals. You, they don't get to take it with them. You know, they're, they're, there's, there's no bank account, you know, put in the casket. There, there's no, there's no company attached to their, to their casket. We don't get to take it with us. So what should we do with it? Well, David points out to us. He said we should be in the finding the place that what God has given us. We should be willing to also share with other people, to give to other people, to contribute to them because they contribute too. Maybe we just don't know how they're contributing, but other people contribute. Number three. When God moves us out, he gives us the opportunity to serve, right, by sharing, by sharing, by, by giving of what we have. The scripture goes on to say in, in 1 Samuel 30, but as his part, it is he who goes down to battle, but so is his part who stays behind. They shall share alike. See, God gives you and I the opportunity to take what we have and share it with other people. Sometimes it's with our family. Sometimes it's with coworkers. Sometimes it's with people we go to church with. Sometimes it's with the neighbor. Sometimes it's with the stranger. God gives us the opportunity to say, bless these people. Bless these people. Share with what you have. I gave it to you so you could share. Too often we're, we're in the, we're, we find ourselves in the place of, of I'm going to keep it for me. Well, I realize that we all have to, we all have, to have a reserve to, to live our lives. We all have to have, you know, thing. We have to have money in the bank account. We have to have food in the pantry for us to eat. But also, God gives us the opportunity to take what we have and share with others, to bless them. Sometimes maybe we don't have money <clears throat> that we can bless others with. Sometimes maybe we don't have food in the pantry that we can bless, but we can do something to share with other people, to share with other people. But David believed so much in this. And wanted to instill this value so much that he made that a law. He, they wrote it down. The scripture goes on to say, so it is from that day forward that he made it a law, an ordinance in Israel. That is not just about the people who are in the front and what they get, but it's also the people who help make that happen. Now, I want to share this with you. If, if, if you run a company, you run a business, you, you, you're your manager, whatever you are, a husband, a wife, got kids, live in a neighborhood, and you're any kind of leader whatsoever. Today, I want you to recognize somebody that helps you get there. Bless them in some way. Bless them. I don't mean in just words. I mean in, in something substantial, something that they can hold, something that they would appreciate. If it's nothing but making them a card, and sending it to them saying, hey, thanks so much for helping me get to this place in life. Thank you so much for being my friend. Thank you so much for, for being a good neighbor. Thank you so much. Do something today to contribute to the well-being of somebody else. Because that's what God's called us to and given us this opportunity. Even in the midst of this pandemic, it's for us to reach down inside ourselves and say, it's not a bit just about me. It's about everybody I can come in contact with. When God, <clears throat> when God moves us out, God gives us the opportunity to build bridges to, to others. Oftentimes in, this, in, in situations like this, is we find ourselves withdrawing, pulling back. Matter of fact, we've been, you know, stay home, stay safe. You know, don't have con social distance. Don't stay away from everybody else. Well, we may have to do that because that, that's maybe what's re required right now. But you can still build bridges to other people. See, when, when, when David realized how important that was, the scripture says in 1 Samuel 20, or 30, 26, he said, So when David came to Ziglag, he sent some of the spoils to the elders of Judah and to his, fr and to his friends saying, Here is a present from you from the spoil of the enemies of the Lord. Notice he didn't say that I got, that are mine. He said, God's blessed me with this, and I'm just going to send this to you as a good gift. As a good gift. He built bridges to those people. Because I think, I think all of us, if, if, you're any, if you're an adult, and whether you're you know, 18 years old or, or you're a teenager or whether you're, you're 
well into years, in your 90s, you have realized that you can't get anywhere without the help of other people. And it's real important to build bridges, not burn bridges. Sometimes we have to do that for our own well-being. But in the meantime, what bridge can we build to somebody? Where can we build a better relationship? What can we take that what we have and, and give it as a gift to somebody else to bless them and build a better connection to them? Maybe there's people in your in, in your family, in your neighborhood, at your work, and even in your church or in your community that they're being kind of obstinate about some things. Well, you can push back against them. You can fight them. You can stand up and and you know and, and berate them and all those kind of things. But oftentimes, if you'll send a good gift to them, the Bible says it's like putting coals on their head. It, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a thing that said they expected you to do this and that's why they did it and you turned around and did the exact opposite and you blessed them. You built a bridge to them, not burnt a bridge to them. See, that's what good leaders do. That's what good, good people who follow Jesus do. That's, that's what good citizens do is we build bridges. We don't burn them. We build bridges. Because we live in a world right now that is trying to see how much they can burn up and how many bridges they can burn with people and make enemies with people. That's exactly what the evil one wants us to do. He wants it to make it. He wants it to be about ourselves. And here David says, no, you don't do that. You build a bridge. Take some of what you've been given and, and build a bridge. When God moves us out, he gives us the opportunity to prepare for the future. You see, somewhere down the road, somewhere down the road, if you burn all your bridges, you're going to come to find yourself on an island by yourself. And you're going to need other people. You're going to need what they have. You're going to need their resources. You're going to need their influence. You're going to, you're going to need what they have. But you burn all your bridges. You burn all your bridges. David said, no, build bridges, but also find yourself, think about the future. Quit thinking about the moment. Quit focusing on a bunch of stuff from the past. Think about the future. Prepare for the future. Not only did David send some of the spoil to the elders of Judah, the scripture says he also sent some to his friends and to all the places that David himself and his men were accustomed to rove. In other words, as they went about fighting fires, fighting battles around the countryside, there would be places that they would have to, you know, uh, uh, stay and camp. And they would, they would make friends with those people there. David said, I'm, I'm going to prepare some more of places like that. And I'm going to send some to these people and say, hey, thanks. He, he thought about the future. He thought about the future because there's a tomorrow for all of us. There's a tomorrow for all of us. And we need to remember that. Prepare for the future. God gives you the opportunity to take what you have and prepare for the future. And then the last one, when God moves us out, he gives us an opportunity to instill the values of mutual benefit and good faith. God gives you and I that opportunity in our community, with our family, our coworkers, our church members, strangers in our country, in the world. God gives us the opportunity to instill the values of mutual benefit and good faith. Here's how David did that. After David had blessed all these people and sent all these gifts, there comes a time that Saul, the reigning king, dies. He's killed in battle. And everybody's at a loss of what to do. But Samuel comes forth and tells them the, king, the next king is to be David, that shepherd boy. That guy that slew Goliath. That guy that's running around here fighting all these battles for you, even though he's not the king. He's out here on your side. Scripture says in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 1 through 4, it tells the story of what happened there, but kind of summarize it. Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Indeed, you are bone and you are flesh. David, you're one of us. David, you're, 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 
a part of the family. Why? Because David had prepared for the future. David had instilled in people good faith and good will in people. He instilled that in them. He brought that to the surface. And as you go through the life of David, you see that over and over again, there were people who would, who would give themselves for David. They would, do, they would do things that nobody else would do. Why? Because David had instilled in them this good will and this good faith that I have in you as a person. I'm willing to do what I can for you. It's not just about me. And they anointed David king over Israel. You see, there is an opportunity to lead people, to value others, and to be a blessing to them. There, God's given you that opportunity. So what's this journey about, this opportunity journey about? Well, first of all, it, it, it's about helping us appreciate the differences of others. See, one of the things that's lacking in people today is, is everybody does not appreciate other people. People have a lot to bring to the table. They may not see it just like you. They may they have a different outlook at, about, about, than you have, but appreciate the fact that they've got something to contribute in your life and in the, in the life of your community, in your job, in your world. Until you learn to appreciate that, you haven't grasped the opportunity that you've been given as you've been let out from where you are. The opportunity is about knowing that God is the source of all that we have. That God's that source. Yeah, we may earn it. Yeah, we may work for it. But ultimately, it's God who allows that. Whether you're a Christ follower or not, I, I want to just share this with you because I, I think oftentimes we, we think we're kind of invincible. Folks, we're one breath, one heartbeat away from not being here. That's that next one that just happened. That God gave that to you. Don't abuse it. Don't misuse it. This just opportunity journey is about promoting goodwill. What can you do to make people's lives better, not bitter? So we've got a lot of people running around making people's lives bitter. B-I-T-T-E-R. Not better. B-E-T-T-E-R. You need to be one of those people who's making lives better. This journey, opportunity journey, is about expanding our influence. Just like David, how far can we extend this goodwill to people? How far can we take the opportunity to serve other people? How far can we get that to go? Not, if, okay, I did it and it's done. Check it off the list. But how far can it reach? Can it reach around the world? Can it reach across the aisle? Can it reach down the street? Can it reach across the fence? How far can you get the goodwill to go? What kind of influence? And then the last thing, this opportunity is about teaching us to serve other people. It's not, it's, 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 it's not something that is natural to us. What's natural is we, we look after ourselves. But this opportunity to, to come out, to, to follow God out of this, is about learning how to serve other people. Dear friend, you and I are not hidden. There's, there, though we may feel alone, we may feel distressed, we may feel like we're, we're, we're caught up in a bunch of stuff, we're not, we're not alone. We're not forgotten. We're not hopeless. God hears us. God wants to send somebody to bless us. God wants to be engaged in our life. God, God is looking to do that for you today. Today. Right now. Because he, he's listening. He's got his hand cupped over his ear. He is leaning in to you today, right now. Saying, would you, just, would you just speak it? Would you just speak it out? Because I'm here for you. I'm here for you. So today, friend, whether you're a Christ follower or, or you're not, I, I want to pray for you. I want to pray a prayer blessing for you. And then we're going to wrap up here today. Father, today for everybody watching and those that are watching on the, will watch on the replay, I pray for them. I pray, God, that, that you will bless them. That, God, that you will go before them and, and make their path straight. That, God, that you will provide for them. That you'll be a blessing. But more, more than that, God, I pray that, that a stranger will come along and be a blessing to them. I pray that a, a, a co-worker will rise up and say, I was thinking of you today and I wanted to just offer you this word of encouragement. I wanted to send you this gift. I wanted you to, 
I wanted you to have this card. I wanted you to have these kind words. I wanted you to have this smile. I wanted you to have you that today. God, I, I pray that you send that to them today, that you be there for them, that you show yourself to that person. God, for, for, for those of us that you're speaking to right now to be that blessing, God, help us put, put feet to our, to our words, to not just speak it, not just think, say, yeah, I believe that too, but that we actually do it, that we actually just do it. God, move us to do that. God, I pray today that not only will you go before them, but you'll be to their right and to their left and behind them, guarding them and being there for them because I know the evil one is walking about seeking to devour us, to turn us in, inward, to make us selfish, to make us ungiving, to, to, to be stingy. To think that, that there's scarcity in the world and there's not enough to go around, so therefore I have to hoard it. God, he's walking about trying to create that in us. He's walking around trying to make us angry at people we don't even know and people who've, who have long been dead and, and, and people who haven't even been born yet. We, God, he, he's, trying to, he's trying to divide us. God, I, I pray that you bring us together. Give us that opportunity to serve other people. I pray this in the name of Jesus, my Savior, and my soon coming King, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, friends, thanks for being with us today. I want to encourage you to share this, and I, I want to encourage you to uh, find somebody today that you can bless. As soon as we get off, find somebody. Call them. Write them a note. Do whatever God puts on your heart to do, and go be a blessing to people. Hey, we'll see you next week right here. God bless. May the God of heaven go before you, behind you, around you, and through you, and beyond you in generations to come. See you next week.